Hello there, I'm Steve Bellion and today you've joined me at Tunnel Barn Farm Fisheries on a beautiful autumn day. It's the middle of October, the temperature's about between 10 and 15 degrees. And today we're going to be really focusing on uh, expander fishing and maggot fishing and how you can get the most out of your bait come the colder months. So what I'll do now, I'll spin around on my box and I'll take you through my peg and talk you through what I'll do to maximise and get the very most out of it. So I've got my rigs on my top kit and now we're ready to fish and the first thing and probably the most important thing when winter F1 fishing is plum plumbing up accurately and I'm going to talk you through a couple of tips that I do to find some fish and give yourself an advantage before the match. When you take the pole out with the plummet you start off at various depths and you just drag it across and you'll see the plummet will stop quite erratically and you'll spook a fish. And normally when that happens, that's when I'll start my session. So I'm just going out at half a section at a time. I'm just looking to find an area or hit a fish to give me an indication where these F1s in the colder weather will ball up. So we're going out now at nine, 10 meters. Just searching across the whole of my swim, just to make sure I'm not leaving any area sort of untouched normally. You hit one, it's fanning across, all the way out to the maximum length. There we go. We'll plumb it then held up, and again. So, just checking the depth. Okay. I've hit a fish out there at 11 metres. So this will probably be my starting point. It's really important as well to pick a far bank marker. So where I've just plumbed up and hit that fish, I'm looking at the platform opposite me. Just positioning my float right in the middle of that platform and I'm plumbing up to the middle of the body. And that's really important when we talk through the hook length choice as well. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna chase them down that slope and see if I can have some against the pot as well. So that'll be the main area that I start on. So what I'm fishing with today is a four mil expander by Mainline Match, the neutral expander. I'm just going to hook it on really nicely through the bend of the hook and then roll it on. And the feeding today, I mean, I see so many people making the, the awful mistake at the start of the match going out with a big pot. We're not going to do that. We're going to start off between 10 and 15 micro pellets. I'm going to show you how to prepare them shortly. And we're going to just trickle some into a chuckle cup. We're going to ship out to our destination where we hit that fish earlier and we're going to see if we can get one straight away. Really importantly, when you go out to your destination where you found it, obviously I'm on a shelf here, so what I want to do is lay my rigging. So I flip the expander out into the deeper water. I lay my float in exactly where I want it to finish. And I'll just gently tapping those 15 micro pellets onto my swim. And I'll sit there and I'll wait to see if I've got any indications on the float. And what we're looking for is we've got to dot the float right down in the winter and the autumn and winter months, because these bites at Tunnel Barn can be really, really shy. Sometimes it's literally just a little dip of the float as opposed to in the summer when it's absolutely rocketing under and ripping the elastic out. You're looking for any sort of little movement on the float, whether that be a little lift or a little pinprick. There's one, hopefully it comes to me later. But again, just tapping a few two more pellets over the top of the float, so about 15 in total, and then we'll sit there and see if we can see anything happening. There we go, straight away. Got in, a little dip of the float and that classic F1 bite is on the hook. Really importantly, especially with a lot of league matches coming up, I've got the teams of four and teams of eight happening here. Not to rush any fish because some of the weights lately here, it, it's been hard on a lot of the pools. So making sure that you, you make the most out of every fish that you've got on. Don't bully it. And another a top tip as well, I see a lot of people using really small landing nets, proper deep landing nets. I use a big landing net, but it's a shallow one. And it gives me more of a target to aim for when I get that fish to the surface. Again, not rushing it taking its time, 
fishing really light elastic, fish, fishing the TH elastic, eight to 10, probably could go down in the next couple of weeks as the weather's getting colder to a six to eight. Again, classic tunnel barn, hard fighting F1. Comes in, there we go. And here we have it. Beautiful bar of gold. Nicely hooked in the chaps. Yeah, we'll get out, we'll get another one. Again, just rolling the pellet onto the hook. And I'll show you how to do that in a while. Rolling it on. Don't want to go out and feed massive amounts again. We've had one fish, let's not get overexcited. So again, going with about 10 micro pellets, 10, 15 micro pellets. And ship out, repeat that process of laying the rigging. It's really important that you get that process and get it uniform and make sure you're doing exactly the same every single time and guarantee you it's going to bring you more bites. So out to the destination that we're fishing in. Flick the pellet into the deeper water. Just hold that float back on the position that you're fishing. Till it levels out. Tap these. Start with some pellets. And you always want your pellets so you can count them out of the pot. It's really important. And hopefully that shouldn't take too long again to go. There we go, fed the pellets now. See if we get any indications straight away. Wind's picking up, so the back shot that I've gone, it, it, again, it's essential to make sure you keep that tight line to the float. These bites are really finicky. And again, we're in. Love this style of fishing in the winter. A lot of people stop and they pack up sort of fishing for carp come winter times. But for me, it's one of the most exciting times of the year to put a fair few fish in the net. It's not easy, it can be hard, but doing the right things, making sure you plumb up correctly, you've got the right elastic, right line, right floats, right bait more importantly, it can certainly help you put some more fish on the bank. Again, not chasing that fish around. Every fish counts and in. Another classic tunnel barn farm bar of gold, around the two pound mark. I'll take these all day long in a match, especially to start off with. There we go. Another nice big juicy fish. Absolutely love this style of fishing, so let's get another pellet on the hook. Get out there and see if we can snare another. Here we go. see, in again. I reckon I've had six or seven F1s now off that spot. And I reckon I've probably fed about 70 pellets, 70 micro pellets. So we're gonna get this one in. Again, taking my time, got a nice big landing net, really important. Make sure you've got a nice big target to aim for. Not rushing the fish, they all count onto a really, really good start, probably onto about 25 pound in the first half hour. I'm gonna get this one in, I'm gonna talk you through. Here we go. Talk you through the baits and the rigs and what I do to put more fish in the net, essentially. Another stunner. It's really, really important this time of year that you're geared up, ready uh, for these cold autumn, winter months. And I'm gonna talk you through some of the equipment and the rigs that I'm using, which have helped me put more fish in the net. So first rig is the pellet rig. Really important, I'm using a 0.4 gram Chianti style uh, float with a 1.5 mil tip. Again, behind the float, closer to the Dacron than the float, obviously, because you don't want it being incorporated into the rig is a, a couple of number nine back shot. 
down the rig. Bottom third, I've got strung out number nines and a four inch hook length, which for me, pellet fishing, some people use six, I use four. I think it's more direct. I get a better bite and uh, I can see everything that's happening in my swim. I put that last number nine shot on my hook length as well. So it's 015 going down to a 0 0.09 bottom with a Guru F1 pellet hook. And for me, that's the perfect balance with a, an eight to 10 or a six to eight elastic, really nice and soft, but it's got some power in the back end in case you, you hook one of these tunnel barn cart that like to go crazy. If we move on to the maggot rig, okay, it's gotta be one of my favorite rigs of all time fishing here on the short line. I've got a nice four by 12, which is a, a 0.2 gram uh, Tom Hardy F1 Slim. 015 down to 030, uh, 015 down to 009 bottoms again. We strung out number 11s. I want a really nice slow fall, but on this rig, I use a six inch, six inch hook length. And the hook again is a, a, um, a Guru F1 pellet. Again, it's a nice fine wire, nice light, light gauge of hook, um, which really um, incorporates itself into the rig when the maggot's falling really slowly through the water. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna show you some of the key things that I take with me to the peg. I'll be lost without them. Really importantly, when you're plumbing up on your peg, a nice heavy plummet. I've got a couple of plummets here out of a set that I got. Um, these are these are custom made ones. Matty Pillay makes them. Um, absolutely perfect for when you're swinging around in your swim, looking to hit some fish. But again, a really nice definitive, accurate reading of the depth that are in your peg. Um, rather than some of the plummets which are really light and made out of lesser material, these are absolutely solid. So invest in a good set of plummets. Again, hooks, key, absolutely key. I've got a real nice set that I've tied for me. All different sizes, 18s up to 20s, four inch to six inch hooks. Um, again, in my favorite style for winter fishing, F1 pellet. I'd be lost without these. Really important that you take them with you. Uh, enables fast changing of your hook lengths should anything go wrong with them. Uh, but also gives you options of changing between the four and six, whichever one suits your flavor. The pellets that I use, really, really simple. And I see a lot of anglers making this, uh, this mistake on the bank. And I had a conversation with a few of them last week uh, just to talk to why they actually do it. So with my pellets, I, I, I fish her a fair bit. I buy the shot bought pellet. You can only feed the shot bought pellet here. But what I do is I prepare them the night before. And what it does is it actually makes a nice swollen pellet and they're individual pellets. And this is really important in the winter when you're feeding because you, you're literally counting the pellets out of your pot and what you're putting into swim. You don't want to really overfeed your swim. So the night before, I put some in a, in a bait tub this sort of size. I totally cover them with water and I leave them overnight. In the morning, I push them all into a big, big tub, big bucket, and I give them a nice shake round and then they go back in the tub. And as you can see, got a really lovely individual pellet. You can count them into the water one by one, especially when you're feeding 10, 15 pellets at a time, you need to make sure you know what's going into your peg. Moving on to the expanders. Um, these expanders for me this year have been absolutely fantastic and last year as well, they were awesome. I've never known an expander pellet take on so much water as these. They fluff up really, really nice, nice and soft on the strike. Absolutely brilliant. These are the mainline match pro expanders, the neutral expanders. And as you can see, absolutely full of water. I've pumped them as well. We'll go through the pumping process. I can show you how to prepare the pellet. Um, I like to do some different stuff with the expanders as well, which we'll also go through. I'll talk you through how to hook them as well and how to prepare them. Pellet fishing in the winter is one of my favorite tactics, uh, one of my favorite methods. And uh, I'm absolutely blown away by the mainline match expanders. They come in neutral. We've actually got them in cell and really popular, the activated flavor as well. I'm going to talk you through how I prepare them. So I've got my pellet pump. I'll just take a few expanders. Just drop them into the pot. You don't want to do loads. You can always do more throughout the session if you need to. Screw the top of the pump on. I'm going to give it a few real good pumps. And as you can see, the pellets are rising and sinking. And what you want to look for is all the pellets to go down to the bottom. When they're down to the bottom, it really is just a simple case of getting your bait tub, 
clearing out a bit of the water out the pump. And then emptying them straight into the pot. And they'll be ready in about 20 minutes to fish with. And as you can see, finished product. Absolutely fantastic, fluffy expander. Great for the hook. What fish can resist that? Another thing that I like to do is uh, colour my pellets and add a little bit of flavour. There's some days where it's just really hard to get a bite and I think by alternating and trying something different, you've got to be giving yourself a little bit of an edge. So I'm going to talk you through how to actually colour your expanders using two of my favourite flavours. The mainline match red krill, uh, which I use on maggots and pellets, an absolutely brilliant additive. And also the chocolate orange, which it speaks for itself. It's got a, a massive reputation within the industry as being one of the go-to flavours for the summer and winter. So again, take your bag of pellets, empty a few of the pellets into the pump. And we're gonna go through that normal pumping process. But we're gonna do something a little bit differently. We're gonna take the main line match captivate, the red krill. We're gonna give it some real good squirts in there. Four or five really good squirts. Again, we're gonna take the pump on the lid, add it on the top, and we're gonna give that a nice shake around. Cover the whole pump. Go through the pumping process again. And what this is actually doing, not only is it coloring the pellet on the outside, it's actually pulling that water, that colored water onto the inside of the pellet. So a lot of, a lot of times I see people adding the, the, the colorants onto the bait. It's on the outside shell, but it's not all the way through. So Doing it this way, that flavour runs through the whole of the pellet. It's absolutely key. I'm going to empty some of that water off. Again, nice red water. We're going to get the bait tub. I'm going to empty them pellets back into the bait tub. We're going to leave that for 20 minutes or so. And what you'll see is a nice fluffy red exp expander and a nice alternative hook bait as well to go to when you're finding things a little bit difficult. What we've done now we've come off the long line on the pellet and we're going to focus on what I think is one of the most deadliest methods uh, moving into the colder months towards the latter part of the match and that's the maggot short line what I've been doing about four or five meters I've been feeding maggots out my hand and now I'm going to drop over the top of it with a really light strung out rig a 4 by 12 float carbon shaft and that's really really carbon stem it's really really important because it actually follows the bait through the water so you get that nice fall instead of just fishing it straight away. I'm gonna go in, double red maggot, and see if we can get one straight away. Just laid it in, nice and flat across the top of my peg. Let's take about 10, 15 maggots, put them on the spot, sink the back shot. Oh, bite straight away. Lovely, hopefully it's a big one waiting for me. Again, repeat the process, flip the rig out. Nice little feed, 10, 15 maggot on that spot. Fishing it all the way down, sink the bank shut. Just wait for there, again. Have to be really careful that they don't start coming up in the water. Ideally, we want to get them down on the deck, so I'm going to hold off this next feed. Flip the rig out, settle the float, fish the way through, sink the back shot. Indication straight away. Hopefully the fish have started to settle. Couple of little indications. This is a method that I would I'd typically do last hour of the match. I would have been feeding it for the last two hours of the match, say two and a half hours of the match, just chucking in 10, 15 maggots every single time I've, I've bought in a fish or I've gone out and refed, 10, 15 maggots. And then the last hour and a half, two hours of a match, I'll drop on it and keep having a look. Normally you can really put a decent weight together in the last couple of hours, hour and a half on this line when they, it's almost like they're queuing up. Sometime, last week on house pool, I've had it where they're, they're ripping the elastic out as soon as it hit the bottom. So again, we flip the rig out, we've let that settle, we've sunk the back shot. I'm gonna 
give a little bit of a feed over the top of it. Here we go, straight away. Into a nice fish on that maggot short line. Again, as I did before on the pellet, you've got to play it really nice and slow. It's time of the year, every single fish counts. Whether it's an 8 ounce F1, or it's a 10 pound carp, it all make the difference. I'm not going to bully it. Nice massive landing net. Nice and shallow though to get to the fish. Nice big target to aim for when that fish does eventually show its head. I've got pullers for these F1 shallow kits. I'm using really light elastic so you could pull on the elastic but just, just taking my time. There's no real need to panic and start pulling the heads off. Especially when you're in this sort of situation where every single fish counts. Bring them out into open water, shouldn't it? Straight out in the net. It's a lovely fish, about two pound. See if they've turned up. Get back out there and try again. Just hooking the maggots. Literally one through the head, the thick end of the maggot, really nice, just through the end of the skin. And then the other maggot to go with it, double red, just through the tail end, literally just nicking it right on the end. Quick feed before I go back out. About 15 maggots again on the spot. And ship out to your swim. And flick your rig out in front of you. And with that shotting pattern that you saw earlier on, It'll sink nice and slowly, and it's fishing straight away. As soon as that float starts to level up, just lower them back shot into the water. So I've got a nice tight line now between the tip of my pole and the float. Makes it really easy to hit these really delicate bites that you have here at Tunnel Barn in the winter months. So again, we're just looking for any sort of movement on that float that's giving me indications that there's actually fish in play. Nice little bite then. Repeat the process, flick out in front of you, feed over the top. It's really good that it actually feed in by hand. You can go out with a putt, but this sort of method, especially when you're heading towards the latter stage of the match, requires a, a, a fair amount of activity on feeding. So feeding out the hand for me is the better option than, than trickling it out of a putt. At four or five metres, it's really easy to be accurate within a say a foot radius of your float. Here we go again, straight away. Love it when it goes like this at Tunnel Barn, goes absolutely solid on that short line. There's a few queuing up there. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get this fish in. I'm gonna talk you through a couple of tips and tricks that I do with my bait, which is quite different. Um, I did it a lot last year really successfully and that's colouring the maggots and giving them a little bit of flavour. I'm going to talk you through that now. Just going to talk you through a little tip that I did last year um, with flavouring and colouring in my maggots and I've got to tell you, it's absolutely devastating. Um, it accounted for some of my best winter weights last year on the short line doing this. And the reason why I like to do it, I found when adding the activator, especially the red krill, which is my favourite on red maggots, um, the maggots hold up in the water and they sink slower and I think it's absolutely devastating and, and killer attraction for these F1s that rely on feeding on site and they feed on site quite steadily. So what I do and how I prepare that, I get a small bait up full of maggots, I get some of the, uh, the captivate, the red krill and then I give a li liberal dose over the top of the maggots, a few squirts. And then I get the lid, place it on top of the bait box. Then you shake it. Shake it to your favourite song if you want. Staying alive is one of mine. So, And you'll see the results after I've done this. You want to see the colour of the maggots. Absolutely blood red. Absolutely blood red. And what I've found when I've been throwing these maggots in, don't get me wrong, it is a messy, messy tactic. You've got to prepare to, to get a little bit messy with it. But this could be the difference between catching and not catching. I can't tell you enough how important it is 
to, and how I always do this with at least a little proportion of my bait in every single match in the winter. And I'll show you why when we throw a few into the water, you can see the attraction that this, this flavoring gives off and also how the maggots sink in the water compared to normal maggots. Get back out there and try again. Just hooking the maggots, literally one through the head, the thick end of the maggot, really nice, just through the end of the skin. And then the other maggot to go with it, double red, just through the tail end, literally just nicking it right on the end. Quick feed before I go back out. About 15 maggots again on the spot. And ship out to your swim. And flick your rig out in front of you. And with that shotting pattern that you saw earlier on, it'll sink nice and slowly. And it's fishing straight away. As soon as that float starts to level up, just lower them back shot into the water. So I've got a nice tight line now between the tip of my pole and the float. Makes it really easy to hit these really delicate bites that you have here at Tunnel Barn in the winter months. Here we go again, straight away. Straight away on that Krill Maggot short line. Going into a lovely Tunnel Barn F1. Again, taking my time with it. They all count. Oh, he's gone off in a bit of madden. Really important to have a real big land in that head. A shallow pan. So you've got a nice big target to aim for when that fish eventually does show itself. After this fish, I'm going to give you a little bit of a rundown on the tips and tricks that I use to, to put more in my net in these winter months. Here it is. Oh, a lovely way to finish the day. Two and a half pound, three pound F1. A tunnel barn on the krill maggot short. Beautiful. So just to recap, a couple of the key points and things that you've got to do um, in the winter months, which are going to help you put more fish in your net. Invest in a good set of plummets, um, ranging from 50 to 40 grams, and search around for them fish at the start by swinging it through your swim. See if you hit anything. If you do hit something, start your swim off there and look for similar sort of areas of similar depth. Um, I've today, I've, I've started on pellet, I've tapped in a few micros. I think I've had 10, 11 fish, just tapping in 10 to 12 micros every single time I've gone in, so I've hardly fed anything. So start on the pellet, see what your thoughts are on that. Also, one of the key things is the preparation of your bait. I can't stress enough how important it is to be prepared for every single situation, whether it be a pleasure session or whether it be a, a match environment. Where possible, prepare your, your micros, your two more pellets the night before or the day before and give them time to swell up so you can actually count them individually out of the pot instead of buying a bag on the bank and waiting for them to, to soak before the match because they're not going to reach their full potential. Also, have a look at the varying flavours and the colourants. For me, the red grill and the, and the chocolate orange are absolutely fantastic, but find something that works for you and follow some of the simple procedures and steps that I've demonstrated in this video. I'm sure you'll put a few more fish in your net.